Boom, there it is. And we're ready to go. Uh huh. All right, now, this is Pastor Omar Muhammad, and we're here with the word. And I'm so excited about what God is doing on 2020. Listen, so um, we are going to be studying from the book of Exodus. Go get your Bibles. I think it's time for you to pick your Bible up if you don't have one. And, uh, and go turn to the first, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and it's the second book of the Bible. And I'm excited about this. Last week, last week, well, who remembers last week? I don't know if you remember last week, but last week the word was, he heard, I'll cry. Uh, and if you haven't heard that before, you can go over here to Seize the Hope and look at, he heard, I'll cry, right there. That's my, uh, that's my YouTube channel, Seize the Hope with Pastor Omar. Go check that out. I have other ones there. Uh, and I have other older sermons and teachings on, uh, on Facebook, too. So let's get into it. Exodus chapter 3, he heard my cry. And if, and if you remember, the, uh, I was early. You can re if you remember, the hearing of the cry had to do with um, God hearing the cry of the Hebrew Israelites. They had been uh, in, this, in this bondage for so long. And God was finally saying to Moses, look, I heard, I, it says that uh, they cried out in their despair, in their desperate cry, because of their slave labor went up to God. God heard their groanings. We talked about this all last week, check that out. But God heard their groanings. I said, this week, we're going to go to the fire. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, Thanksgiving. I know me and my family did. My daughter, Safiya. She is, uh, yeah, Mina, Mina, Mina. She, she had a sweet 16th birthday. Happy sweet 16, Daryl. I love you. All right, that's my big shout out to my daughter. Uh, all right, let's go. Exodus chapter one. Now, I introduced this Bible to you last time, so I hope you remembered that introduction, the Net Bible. And it has these wonderful notes next to it. So we're looking at this, they call in this chapter nothing, just chapter three. But I can say that the next few <clears throat> chapters are going to be all about Moses. Now, you got to, this is the stage of Moses was in. Moses had already spent 40 years, <clears throat> I mean, I think my, my, I don't think I even share my screen with you yet. So let me see what's going on. But you don't see what I see yet. You just see me. And that's all good. So, because I want to talk to you right now. Moses had been 40 years in Egypt, growing up as the Prince Moses, the, the Pharaoh's son, you know, the, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Yeah, Pharaoh's daughter, that is. And uh, he grew up like a prince. Now, this is the first 40 years. Now, after he had tried to save his people by, by uh, breaking in and trying to break down this whole thing of the Egyptian rule over the, the Hebrew Israelite people, he got caught up. <clears throat> Killed the dude, right? And he and then and then tried to get away with it, tried to go back over there to the Pharaoh house and hang out with them because he was not with them, but 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 because he denied them, he let them go. But he went on further and went on to uh try to do it again. The next day, them, them young folk was like, nah, we ain't gonna have you doing what you did last time. You you know, you 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 killed that Egyptian, put him away, but this is a flight between me and my brothers, and, and you know, that's the people. You can't be doing that again. And said, so who made you a prince? Now, they didn't know that God made him a prince and a deliverer. Uh, or, and, and, and also, the Pharaoh's daughter made him a prince. But they, they, they you know, they clamming on him. They're talking crazy. Who made you a prince? You know how the people do us. They do us all the time. Who, who you think you somebody? Who, you just, who, who are you? I don't, we don't even know who you are. You have no street cred. What's going on with you? Well, I don't know. People will talk to you like that. But when you start growing in your faith and you start walking with the Lord, you got power, just like Moses did. But it took a good little while before Moses got some of that power, y'all. It took a good little while. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me share my screen with you now. And we have this going on. I don't know if you hear that shooting in the background. Some kind of way my children's uh, <laughs> children's uh, gaming got connected to my speaker. All right, here we go. So you should see it now. Here, share my screen. Boom. Here we go. I was, I'm over here now. I'm gonna try to make it bigger so you can see me. Uh, and I, sometimes it's good for me to see myself as well. Here, okay, so now Moses. Now Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock 
to the far side of the dead. Now, now that's saying a whole lot. We, we ended chapter three, uh, we ended chapter two with uh, Moses uh, going in and help one more time. He's, he's still, he's a deliverer all, all the way through the He did one more time. He said, I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to go over there and try to help some people. And he helped these three, these uh, seven daughters, right? He helped these seven daughters and they, and these daughters were fine. They were, and he, you know, he fought, he fought back the other shepherds. Like they were all pushing the, the women around. Like, who are you? You ain't nobody. Push them around. And, and Moses went up there and like, nah, y'all gonna, y'all gonna treat these, these sisters like that. You're gonna have to stop doing that. And so the sisters, uh, got, the sisters got home early that day. They, they, they were like, uh, how y'all get here so fast? And he said, he said, Moses said to, uh, they said, this guy looked like an Egyptian. He helped us. And his father was like, are y'all crazy? Y'all better go get that dude and invite him home. Invited them home, and uh, they they hit it off right away. Uh, Mo- Moses, uh, these seven daughters, their father was a priest. They called him the priest of Medan, uh, and he so he was a priest, and he was spiritually con- inclined. Had these beautiful daughters, and he did what he did was he said, I- I- "I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give you one of my daughters. You hang out with me." And that brother hung out there for a long time with that with that family. He learned. He became a shepherd of actual sheep rather than a shepherd of people yet, because God's going to make him a shepherd of people. But right now, God's training him with the shepherd of sheep. And it's a wonderful thing. This, this, this high time uh, brother who used to have the best of everything because he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now you got to live the life of a humble uh, uh, shepherd. You know, uh, yeah, that's right. You have, to, you have to be around all the boo-boo and all that kind of stuff. He, you got to get your, get your hands dirty. And God gave him that with a wonderful wife and he had a child. So, that, so, this, is, so this is how we start off with this. Now let's go, now let's go back and see, um, see what it says there. Let's see. I'm going to share my screen again. Share here. Boom. I'm sharing. Let's see. Am I sharing? Not yet. Share the screen. Share this one. I share. Boom. Here it is. So now, now Moses, see my little hand thing, arrow on this side, handle it. Now Moses was shepherding the flock of his father in law, Jethro, the man who's a priest, the man who gave him a wife, a wife, Zipporah, and they, you know, they started the family together. The priest of Mena, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert. So he got his sheep, he led them to the far side of the desert. Nothing really big about that. He just went to the other side. No, no big deal. I, I'm not even moved there. But, but, but this part started getting me. It's the, to the far side of the desert and came to the mountain of God. What is this mountain of God? What is it? To Horeb. What, what is this mountain of God? I don't even know what this is. If you and y'all know what a mountain of God is, I do not know. But let's see what these notes say. The note says here, Horeb. Now, Horeb is another name for Mount Sinai. Oh, I remember that mountain. That mountain was the one where Moses uh, eventually uh, gets to let, brings the people back to and gets the Ten Commandments. That's Mount Sinai. Oh, well, so something happened. He's already at Mount Sinai? Yeah, Moses is already at Mount Sinai because he's out there doing that work. And, if, and so he's at Mount Sinai before he had, so he's, he'd been, when he, went, when he came back with all the Hebrew Israelites, he, he, he had already been there. And they called that the Mountain of God. Not sure why they said that, though. That I do not understand. They just come up with this mountain of God, but I guess because I guess because the person who wrote this particular passage, uh, Moses, whatever, they already knew it was going to have some significance. That's the only thing I could think of. They knew it was going to have some significance, so they didn't just call it Mount Sinai. They called it the mountain of God. But here's this to Horeb, and then and then it says right after that. Now this might be the real reason why. This might be the real reason why they call this thing the mountain of God. <laughs> Look at this. It says. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from within a bush. The an- so wait a minute. This brother is out there on the far side of the desert, on the dark side. He out there doing his thing. All of a sudden, uh, he's near the mountain of God, and a angel of the Lord appeared to him in the form of fire. Oh, come on, we gotta stop this for a second. Let me let me stop this here for a second. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you a bit because because. A lot of times we try to understand who God is and how God is and what's, what God is like. And, and we, we, we try to come up with it, but we don't really know what God is like in the realness. So, so um, the Bible has taught us that we look at natural order. We look at nature to kind of get an idea of what God is like. 
and I was having this conversation with my wife. I was like saying, you know, we were trying to talk about God because uh, in, in our tradition, we have that God uh, manifest in the, in, the, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this spiritual uh, manifestation of his different forms, he formed, he manifests God, manifesting as a father figure, manifesting as a son figure, and manifesting as the Holy Spirit. Now, father and son, you know, some people say that the father and the mother is the Holy Spirit, and they produce the son, who, who well, I don't know. That's the first time I heard myself say that. Anyway, uh, whatever it is, Father and Son, and then the Holy Spirit, right? And so that's how we try to describe something that's indescribable. We try to describe the God and Godhead and who he's all in. And so we have to use these kind of terminologies to find that. Here's one of the things they said. They called it, they called it the fire of God. God came in the manifestation of the fire of God. And as I was talking to my wife, I was like saying, you know what? Oh, and the discussion was this. Uh, why is it that the Bible says that if we see God, no man can see God and live? What? No man can see God and live. And my wife had a speculation and about it. And I was like, okay, that's a good one. Here's what I think. I think that when we actually, if we actually turned and looked at God, it would, we would spontaneously explode. <laughs> I, I mean, we would just turn into like, you know, to see the ultimate God, I think we would just be absorbed in the spirit. No more body at all. We done with the body because we, we blew that up when we looked at God. <laughs> Uh, and, just, and, and because and so and, and, and something about this is true because if, when Moses asked, "Can I see you?" He Moses. Now this is this is God is rolling roll with Moses like they homies, right? And Moses is like, "Can I see you? I want to see what you really look like." And God said, "Yes, but under certain conditions. I'm gonna have to go put you over here in this cleft of the rock, and I'm gonna walk past you. So the only part you're gonna see is my hind side. I only see my back side. You know, brothers be looking. You know." Whatever. God said, I want you to hang out over here in this cleft so I can walk by. And when he walked by, he saw beautiful things of God. Y'all might want to study that. I'm not going to take my time to study that. But he saw he saw a, a beautiful things about God, compassionate, merciful, all those type of things. And, and Moses was like, wow, God is awesome. And so I said, I said to my wife, I said, I know we can't really look at God because we can't even hardly look at the sun good and then don't burn our eyes out. I mean, have you ever just looked at the sun like you looking at the sun, you will burn your eyes out, close your eyes, you look at it too long, you can't even see anymore, you hope that your vision comes back. Man, no. And we can't even look at one of God's little small stars in, 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 in comparison to the whole universe, as I understand the scientists are revealing to us that this is a small star that we have here. This our sun. Big, everything to us, but a small star. But if we can't even look at one other thing, how we think we're going to look at the I am that is the creator, that, that powerful energy that created them fish behind me and that powerful energy that created you and me. Whatever this thing is that plant have animated plants, you know, have uh, dogs, all different forms of creation all over. Whatever animated us is what we are trying to look at. And one way we can look at them, the Bible said, is through our natural order. When we look at the sun, we can see that the, the sun is like everything to the earth. We need this sun, you know? And so, so, so as the sun, so God is to us. We need to be connected to the source. The, the source is God himself. He's the one that gives us the energy to move forward. All right. I think I took, I think you got a, a glimpse of what I'm trying to say here and what we're getting ready to look at. Now, I told y'all, we're going to see God in the form of fire. We're going to be on this mountain because God going to show up as fire. Now, I don't know about you. Here's my thing. I, you know, I have a thing about fire. Fire is a, you know, fire, you know, yeah, I got, I got, I, I, I collect Zippos. Anybody? <laughs> this is my gift. Zippo lighter. All right. This is one with a dot. Right, so, I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't show up like that. Oh, there it is. Fire. I love fire. Fire, you know, and I think Something about the fire makes me think about God. And you know, you know what it is like a fire. Now, I'm not trying to get you, you pyromaniacs getting started because, you know, I grew through that stage, pyromaniac. You can, and then you can discipline yourself. You don't have to burn everything down, not, not everything. So we're getting ready to look at God as fire. What, what characteristics do we know about fire? First, the characteristics we know about fire, fire gives forth light. They said the scripture says that God is love, and I've I've, I've seen another prayer that says God is light, and you know, and God is truth. So so one of God's characteristics is light. Does that the the, the 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 fire gives forth what else? The fire also gives forth like warmth, energy, 
you know? So, so what's, what my brother is about to do, he's thinking like, wait, wait a minute, I know what happened. And then fire consumes, you know, um, I pulled this up for you guys. I'm going to say it right here because I hear fire consumes. And what I pulled up with you for, with a scripture that always stay in my head when I'm thinking about, um, about God being in the form of fire. And, uh, and here's, here's, here it is. Let me pull it down. So, uh, come on now. It's, this is a, uh, is it New Testament? Let me see. No, it's not. This is, this is still Hebrew Bible. Uh, but the scripture says here, for the Lord, that's Yahweh, that's the I am. The anytime you see capital L, capital O-R-D, that's the I am that is. That's, that's, that, that's, uh, we're going to be introduced to him in a few minutes. That number is going to be very important for us to know. We're going to be introduced. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. God got the nerve to be a fire and jealous. He, hey, listen, I, that's why I don't be fooling with God. I, I, I love the Lord. I'm going to tell you, I love the Lord, but I ain't trying to make him jealous. I'm not trying to give myself over to some other stuff, spending too much time with, with things and, and worried about COVID to make God not, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to make God jealous. I, I, I love hanging out with the most high God, the I am that is. Yahshua HaMashiach is, was that human face of the I am. I love that. And so, so, so it, we already know that Hebrew, uh, yeah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy is the fifth book. By that time, this co concept of God being a, a fire is real. And they realized that, that God, and you don't want to fall. It's a fearful thing, I think, in the Hebrew, uh, uh, in the Christian Bible said, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of, you know, the you know, fiery hands of God. I, I don't want to do that. I want to be on the good God, good side all the time. Uh, let's see, make sure we are sharing this. So um, anyway, God is, is so good to us and what he's doing, allowing me to get a little bit of time here to study the word of God with you. Uh, that's another thing I love to do. I love to study the word of God. Yes, I call it the word of God. I don't know what you, if you got a problem with that's you. I call it the word of God. Call it what you want to call it. Just going to call it Bible, want to call it literature. Call it what you want to call it. I call it the word of God. Anyway. Here it is, we're talking about this angel, and it says, verse two, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from within the bush. Now these numbers here are really good in this Bible. Like when you use this Bible at home by yourself, I want you to know these numbers are powerful. So if you click on this number here, so this number, this number, the angel of the Lord, you click on this, click on this number four, and look how this thing side move. It says, this is the designation, the angel of the Lord, Hebrew, the angel of Yahweh occurred in Genesis already. This angel, and they say something about this angel. There is some ambiguity not knowing this in the expression, but it seems often to be interchangeable with God's name. This is the angel of the Lord or God's name. It's self-indicating that it is it refers to the Lord. This is this is this is huge stuff here that this angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Let me see. Let's see what six says. That was a good note. Okay. And so, yeah, this clears it up. This is saying, look at the note. He talks about this guy, Ganesis. He's a good Bible teacher and help us understand it. And he's saying that it would then indicate by using this Beth, this B, this Hebrew B, Beth, it would, in, it would indicate that Yahweh appeared to Moses as a flame. But then remember, there was something about this flame. Let me read on because it, did, it wasn't just an ordinary flame like I just showed you. It said a flame of fire within a bush. So, so it was like a, a bush. You can imagine a bush that's burning. Now, if you have a bush that's burning, it's probably at some point going to go out. The bush is burning and it's going to go out, right? But um, in this particular case, it didn't. It says... That the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire within the bush. He looked, and the bush was ablaze with fire, but was not being consumed. Let's let's see what this what this uh, what the Dr. Constable says about that. He he might want to say something about that. What do you want to say, Dr. Constable? He said the construct uses the suffix. Okay, go ahead to convey the subject of a passive verb. Okay, all right. It was not consumed. 
it was the amazing thing for nothing would burn faster in the desert than a thorn bush on fire. So you see, so Moses been out there in this desert. He learned the terrain. And so he's like, what, what is this? What, what kind of fire? This is this. This looks like something different. Let me go take a look at this. And as I was saying, if I could hear the Lord saying, and what's going on in your life? Can you see any strange burning somewhere in your life? Is there something that's going on in your, and you look at the landscape where you are. Is there something that's starting to get your heart burning? You starting to think about it like, is there some kind of fire going on and you want to take a closer look at it? How, you know, some of us, the fire is, the, uh, we understand it now and it's good that, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, that the good news about Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ and the, and the, and the, and the redemptive work that happened, that that news has, they have fire, they got power in it. And then when we just speak it and share it out to people, people get born again. People come into the awareness, and so there's a new kind of awareness. They come into the awareness of the I am that is in such a different way, and that it's almost like God comes inside of them and begins to live with them and, and help them to understand it. So that's that's what we learn about this gospel, that is powerful like that. And but here it says that, uh, that it says to convey the subject of the passive verb, it was not consumed. It was an amazing thing. So. So you need to look for the amazing fires in your life. I'm just reading it from this text, but I heard God saying to me, hey, hey, you need to let the people know. I'm setting some fires up in some life. I'm appearing to them in some form, whether it's fire, a pillar of fire. You know, remember when the people come out of Israel, uh, come out of Egypt, God showed up as a pillar of fire, not just the fire that, that's burning this bush and he can't figure out what it is. God shows up as a pillar of fire by night in a cloud by day. So when God wanted to move through the night, he was like this, a pillar. I, I can't even imagine fire just moving and we following that fire. I know I'll be, I'll be right up front looking at that. Whoa, look at, what, what am I seeing here? A pillar of fire? God showed up like that in their life. And so in a physical way, but he may be showing up like that in a spiritual way in your life right now. And so they're saying that it was it was not being consumed. It was, it's it's burning the bush, but the burnt the bush is not burning. Something something wrong. And so Moses wanted to check it out. It says so Moses thought, I will turn aside to see this amazing sight. He already know it's some wild stuff about to be over there. He, he already got this figured out. He said it's an amazing sight. All right. I don't know if Dr. Constable wants to say anything on there. Uh, uh, yeah, it just says that, that Moses said to himself, I got to go check this thing out. I, I got to go look. That's what this verse left. I, I got to go see what's really going on. And I, I totally get that. And then it says, that, um, it says um, to express the purpose or result, logical sequence, I will turn aside in order that I may see good. All right. So he got, and remember, he's not out there by himself. He out there with his flock. And so he got to turn aside and see what's going on. And so he turns aside, animal flock that is, he turns aside to see. It says this amazing. So he's already given an adjective. Uh, Dr. Constable would say something like, uh, the word means something extraordinary here. And using this term, Moses reveals his reaction to the strange sight and his anticipation that something special was about to happen. So he turned aside. You see that, y'all? Okay. I found this on the web. I'm, I'm not talking to you, Siri. I, I'm not talking to you. I need you to be quiet right now. I'm talking to okay. the people here. Thank you. I'm talking to the people here. I, I, my beloved friends out here. Yeah, I, I, some of them already started Shabbat. You know, I'm going to, I'm in my Shabbat, uh, getting into it right now, a uh, mode. And so here, and that's why I like to study during this time and have a good Shabbat, meditate on the things of the Lord. This is an amazing sight. He goes and look at it. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw, when the Lord saw, now this is L O capital L O R D. This is, you need to take a look at that word. So I'm gonna look and see what he said, but we want to, we really want to check that word out because uh, that's not the capital L-O-R-D, so that's something different. So it says, uh, okay, it's this, you know, okay, it's subordinate, the temple cause, okay, main point of the verse, that God called him. And when the Lord saw him, all right, and when the Lord saw him, that he turned aside and called him. Yeah, that's good. It's anthropomorphic as if, the actions was based on his observing what Moses did. Yeah, so yeah, so, so okay, that, let me see. This is saying that uh, when the Lord saw, so he, it's, it's almost like 
we're speaking of the Lord as though he's a, a human being, a, a person. So when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to look, God called, from, called him from within the bush, which is in the fire. So the fire is now talking to Moses. <laughs> Woo! What a vision. Oh, wait. My goodness. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to come out of here. I'm going to have to talk for a minute. I got to get this out of my, my I got to get this out. What a vision Moses is having here. He, he, he's walking toward this thing to find out what's going on. And the Lord, it said, the Lord saw it. Now, I said, I mean, you need to take a look at that, Lord. Let's go look at that in the Blue Letter Bible. I'll touch it when we read that. Uh, so we're in Exodus, uh, we're in Exodus chapter 3. Uh, and the Lord flame, and he looked, and the bush was in the fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, so here's the verse we're going to get. Uh, okay, we're going to get this verse right here. Now, when we open that up, I got to let y'all go in a few minutes. Yes. So I can't stay long. I already promised my son to go play a game of chess today. We're getting better at it. Moreover, it said, moreover, we're reading this verse. Moreover, I am, and it's the Hebrew part, Amar. This is almost like my name, O-M-A-R. There's no O. So this is actually my name, Amar in Hebrew, Amar. And that word means, uh, you know, said, to speak, to say, and all that kind of thing. Right. I am the God of thy father that we went too far. Abraham, no, we went too far. No, I don't want to go that far. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We are up here. We are at verse four. Here we go. And when the Lord, all right, now here's that right word. This is the right one. I'm going to open that up in just a moment. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, ra'ah, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called, Quara, him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, Moshe in Hebrew. And he said, here am I. I love this. Now, I don't know if y'all watched this. Right around Easter time, one of my favorite of all time shows come on. Let me, uh, let me see. I don't think you're on this with me. So let me make sure that you are tapped in with me here. I just read that to you. Look at that. Got that music going. And it says, now when the Lord, I told you we're going to come back to this. Now this is one of the most important words to me in all of the Hebrew Bible. And it's not, a, it's not actually a word, it's a name. Let's go look into it a little bit deeper. Ah, this is talking about. He's trying to say something here. He's saying that this is that word people call Yahovah. And we're going to listen to it, see how it sounds. Let's see how they say it. Strong's H 3068. Yahovah. 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 This Yahovah. We call him Yahweh, you know, but we, we put these vowels and stuff here. These are vowels. These are the main letters here. And then these are the vowels, Yahovah. And they say, what part of speech is this? Ah, proper noun with reference to a deity. All right, this word comes from this one right here. I love this word. Let's take a look at this one. This, this, is, this, this Yahovah comes from this root word. You know, that's the root word right here. It's the etymology. We're going deep today, y'all. It's a deep dive. I don't know if y'all ready for it. Here, look at this word. Listen, listen. Strong's H, 1961. Hayah. 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 I love that. My father's name was Yah. Yah. Hayah. I find that there's a lot of names of God. Ah, la. A lot of people use this Yah sound in their name with God. It's just, it's just like, and here is what it means. It's a verb. To become to be, come to pass, to exist, happen. So, so this word, haya is the word of life, this word of being. This is, this is the I am himself. And so, oh, I don't know if I told y'all this, but there are some people who, uh, especially of, uh, of our, our Hebrew uh, part of the family, um, Jewish part of the family, they don't even like to say the name Yahovah. They won't say it because they said it's so sacred that they won't even say the name and they stopped. That's why they took all of it. They messed it up. They changed it to Jehovah. So we won't ever say Yahweh. 
but and it comes from the word haya. Now I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I hear speak, people speaking in tongues, I hear this haya come out. It is the haya, the I am, and the haya, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they be into it. I hear them, and I was like, I don't know if they know what they're doing, but this is what's happening. It's happening in that kind of format. So we got this ya. So now let's take it back. But what did we just learn? That ya to be the I am, and now we take it back. We take it back. This word goes, that was the root word of this word right here, which was what? Yahovah, right? Yahovah, right? Strong's H 3068. Yahovah. 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 Right. So then we go here, and that's that word. Very important word. Now, what does it mean? The existing one. You see now? Now you see how we saw it. It came from over there. We saw it had to do with life and being and becoming, right? And then now he's saying this has to do with the existing one. And then, and then it's the, really the existing one that exists all by itself, that doesn't need nobody else to exist but himself. The I am that is, the, the ever being, the ever, you know, the, the I am is a verb, always moving. You know, I, th I think God is a, is a verb, you know, and because like love is a verb, it moves, <sighs> moves throughout all the creation. And right now he's about to move because he said he heard in the last few verses, he said he heard the cry of his people. And so now he's going to do something about it. And I have to repent right here. And then I'm going to close with this. Yeah, I have to repent. We got to a good spot, right? And we'll come right back here to uh, at the beginning. But recently I've been, uh, my, 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 uh, how are my children with it? I've been complaining. Being and complaining. You ever somebody says being and complaining? You just and I've been complaining about this. This is the thing I've been complaining about. Let me get let me get full speed. I need to see you full speed now. I, I was complaining about how long it took for God to hear the prayers of the people of Israel. I was really mad about it. Still kind of mad about it because, you know, I started this whole thing out with saying that, <clears throat> that the Hebrew Israelites that are here in the Bible, <clears throat> is almost they lived our exact lives. They got our soul. They just like us. And no, some people say they are us. We are the Hebrew Israelites. Wherever it is, I, I, I understand them now. I'm like, they, they, they some deep people. And I was saying that, how did I get there? I wanted to, let me get back to my thought that I was saying about Ahayava. Oh yeah, I was saying this. This is what I was saying. Thank you, Father, for bringing it back. So I was being and complaining about 400 years. 420, trying to, you know, whatever. Some people 430, whatever. That 400 years, I'm like, why did you take so long? And for me, that is a heck of a long time. 400 years? I was like, the uh, United States of America is not even 300 years old. Barely in the 200s. And we're talking about 400 years of bondage to a so-called superior, people think they're superior to me. That's a long behind time. I'm mad about it and been mad at the Lord about it. And then, but I'm trying to be cool about it. But I'm like, Lord, I don't like that. I'm, I'm not feeling it. And then I look at how long um, um, the descendants of Africa and descendants of American slaves have been under bondage it's the, the same kind of time this 400 years i'm like what did we do to get ourselves in this predicament we must have really we must have really did some unrighteous things to get us moved off our land and get us pushed off into some other place you know and, and we already knew that because you know according to the bible the way we go into land is because their, their cup of iniquity gets full if they when 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 it, when, when a city get so full of itself and so full of missing the mark, not even thinking about God, when, it's, when a city happens like that, according to the scripture, God allows somebody else to come in and move them on out. They, they disqualified. They forgot about the I am. They forgot about who gives them the life, health, breath. And so they got to go out so some righteous folk can come up in there because usually where God puts you is a really good place. And especially if God plants you there, it's a really good place. Thank you, Lord, for planting me in sunny Southern California. Yes, Lord, I love it out here. Woo! Yeah, they tricked us over on the East Coast, made us think that y'all, y'all, it was crazy over here. But this is a good life. <laughs> Big shout out to LA and, and Los Angeles. So, so anyway, I'm saying to you is this: for 100 years seemed like a heck of a long time for me. 
and then one of my one of my brothers, big homie, uh, the Rev, drops up on me. He said, "You know, I'm a mathematician, right?" I said, "Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You got, you got, you got his uh, uh, BA degree. I don't know, he might even got a master's in it, but in mathematics." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." He said, "I'm, I, I, I did the math on this day. The Bible said, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years for us." I said. <laughs> This is God kind of time. And I don't know how these humans came up with this concept. How they, they must have heard something from God. I don't know what happened. But it, but, but it actually says, look it up. You got to find one day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And then he did the, And then I started doing it. He said, now, now, how long you think 400 years is? I was like, dang. <laughs> Boop, a blip. It's not even a day in God's, in God's kind of speed time. But we get, to, we get to live in this, we get to share with one another, we get to grow with one another, we get to go through this spirit. So I ain't mad at the Lord anymore. I'm trying to recover from that and then find out that, okay, so you move slower than I, I like to move, but you're moving. How can I help in this time to move the, the thing going along? He said, you Omar, this is what I want you to do. <laughs> I want you to sit down in front of, some folk use the technology and teach the word. Teach, teach, teach this. I spent, I put, I invested a whole lot in you for that. Yes, 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 you did. Got me a, a historically black university education from Morgan State University. Big up Morgan, MSU. Yes, yes. Go Bears. Go. Oh, yes. So then we got, um, then we got went to Dallas Theological Seminary, DTS, one of the best uh, fundamental theological seminaries in the nation. Yeah, it took four years to get that one of original languages and everything. Yeah, and so God had me take that. And now I'm in a PhD program at Claremont Graduate University. And why am I even saying all this? Because when I come on to share with you something from the word, I'm not coming with no poo but understanding. I put my time and effort into bringing you the best that I can, and in a way that makes sense to you. I mean, I can leave you over there in, in Moses' land and, and time and story, but how is that going to make sense to you? You need to be looking around. Today, we learned that there are some fires that God has set in place in our lives, and we need to look around for those fires, and wherever that burning is in our heart, wherever that burning is, I think I should do this, and some of us need to get up and do something right now, because it's almost too late. You almost slept on, on the, all the power and the energy that God's given us through this COVID thing. So I need you to get up. I need you to look around in your life and sit down. I don't know. Do what you be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, 10. Take a little time to meditate for a minute and ask yourself, look, Heavenly Father, what would you have me to do? Reveal yourself to me. Let me understand who Jesus the Christ is. Let me understand my role in this relationship. Let me understand what it means to be you and me and I and you and we as one. Let me understand what this whole thing is about. I want to take this to another level, and I can't do it with just my own strength. I need you to help me get to the other side. That's what I'm hoping that you would do. And that's why I'm sitting here. I'll, I'll try to come in every Friday night uh, around 8 o'clock, and that's when I wind down for my family. I'm trying to go into Shabbat. I want to thank you for spending time with me. If this is good, I need you to share it. I need you to plant some seed in somebody else's heart so they can see God is good right now. Ask for that thing, because we're going to break that down. We found out what God's name is, the name that capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, in your King James Bible is always going to be that word, the Lord, the Hayah, the I am. Somebody need to say, Hayah! Hiya, 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 hallelujah. God bless you. This is Pastor Omar. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. You cannot go wrong with that. Peace and blessings. And I'm out. I love you. Thank God for you. I know that God is good in this day and time.